is the parable of the prodigal son that the whole world knows including Christians and non-Christians as the parable of the prodigal son. I don't know where that word came from but it is not in the scripture. So I don't call it the parable of the prodigal son, I would call the parable of the loving father. It is more with the father than with the son. That's the story. We started with the parable of the lost sheep where the sheep were lost due to ignorance and when then we continued with the parable of the lost coin. One out of ten coins were lost. The first one was one out of a hundred, one percent. The second one was one out of ten coins and still the owner of the coin searched the house all around until she found it and then she rejoiced when she found that coin. So it is not about one out of a hundred or one out of ten. Each soul is valuable for God. He will seek after the one that is lost. Regardless of you are one out of ten children or one out of hundred sheep or even one out of a two children that we see here today which is <coughs> many times think about as fifty percent lost but it's not. It is a hundred percent lost because both of the sons were lost. One was lost away from home, the other one was lost in the home. We can be in the best church, we can be born and raised in the best family, we can be around good Christians and people who teach you good things, you can still be lost in the middle of that. So we will go through this and study these things as the Holy Spirit's guide, Holy Spirit guides us. We see good choices and bad choices in this particular parable. Last Sunday we saw that the younger son asked for his share of his uh, inheritance so he can leave home and go away from the father. The father lovingly gave him what he asked for and he made a choice to leave the father's presence. There were several choices that he could have done. One, he could have taken the inheritance and lived with his father or he could have been closer to his father with enjoying his inheritance or he can be there, continue to live with his uh, father and enjoy the presence of the father. So it was not the the inheritance that mattered, it was the longing for his heart to run away from the father, to leave the presence of the father, that was the problem, with the biggest choice that he went wrong on. Many times we do the same thing. We wander away from God even though God wants us to be close to him and he never wants us to be away from him at all. He was, he's always close as a breath. He created us with good, good image of himself to reflect his glory in this world. And he doesn't want us to be away from him. But you know the story what happened in the Garden of Eden. God came and spent time with him every day. And one day when God came, they were hiding. It was not who, it was not God who was hiding. It was the people who create, whom He created, sinned against Him and rebelled against Him, and they went into hiding. And then God still started searching for them. And then you know the rest of the story. So this, cho the choices started in the Garden of Eden. God created everything, and found them all good. God created man by His own, uh, His own hands from the dust of the earth and he breathed his life into that so that it became a living being, living human being and that was Adam and then he found, uh, created a partner for him Eve from his own body to be one together enjoying the presence of God, enjoying the blessings of the garden, living together in holy presence with God but man rebelled against God and took the wrong choice. Adam and Eve decided to trust the devil more than God. The devil told them, God is lying to you. He said, God told him that if you ever eat from this tree, you will die. Then the devil came and said, no, that is not true. He is lying to you. I am telling you, if you ever eat from this tree, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. 
So they trusted God, uh, the devil more than God. That is where their choice became really problematic. They believe the devil saying that God is a liar. Don't we do that sometimes? I do it. God tells me, be patient. I said, no God, you don't know. I know better. <laughs> I know what to do. But God wants me to be patient, but I am not patient. God gave me promises that he will heal me when I am sick, but I don't trust him. God get, told me in his promises so many times that do not worry about tomorrow, but I continue to worry about tomorrow because I don't trust him. You know, friends, God is a good God. He is always there taking care of us, even when you know it or not know it. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to trust him fully. And when we trust him, we know the experience, you and I have experienced it. When we trusted him fully, it is the great, great joy that we get in our lives in trusting God. So we see both good choices and bad choices. The good choice that he made is after he went away and spent all his money and went into trouble and finally came back to his senses, what, that's what the Bible says. Then he made a choice. To come back to the Father. That is a good choice that he made. So our land is a land of choices, America particularly, among all the countries that I have lived and visited. There is no place like America about choices. Turn on your TV. How many channels do you have? Do you know which one to watch? You have so many channels that you can go back and forth and uh, uh, enormous selection of channels and things that you can enjoy, the models of cars, the food you can eat, I mean, you can eat the healthy food and the not very healthy food or whatever you can eat, brands of different items of stuff that we buy every day, how many choices do we have? Sometimes we don't even know what to buy. God gave us the gift of choice. And like I said, that was given to the first man and, and woman to be intelligent, thoughtful, to make decisions based on good and evil. And God gave us the ability or the right to choose from the good and the evil. We must make choices. But that's, that's where we fail sometimes. Some people don't want to make choice. Making no choice is also a choice. There's good choice, there are bad choice. But making no choice is another choice that sometimes we miss. When there is a place where God places you to make a choice, trust in God and pray about it and make choices or rather sit there and do nothing. And you know what happens if you don't make a choice, somebody else will make a choice for you Amen. that you may not like it. We must make choices and do not hide from responsibilities. That is the big thing about having choices come with responsibility <coughs> so that you take responsibility to make the choice. It's a story about Ronald Reagan who learned that from very young age, if you don't make a choice. His aunt um, took him to a shoe store and had the shoemaker to make him some custom-made shoes. So the shoemaker asked him if he wanted square-toed or round-toed uh, shoes. There are square-toed and round-toed. And he couldn't make up his mind. So when he went back to pick up the shoes, one was round and the other was square-toed. So it was a lesson the shoemaker was teaching him, which he mentioned several times in his speeches, that taught him a lesson that if you do not make a choice, somebody else will make it for you and you may not like it and you don't want it. So as Christians or as people of faith who have convictions of our life and our doctrines and what God gave us to live in this world, let us step up and make decisions as needed. That is what we are here for. God has given us a time to live in this world. It's not a long life. But every single choice and decision that we make matter to God. Every single choice. In, in Deuteronomy, God tells him that I have set you before life and death. Blessing and cursing. You can either choose life or you can choose death. We are in this world today. God has given us to choose the way of good or the way of evil, both are before you. Would you choose 
the way of good or would you choose the way of evil? We choose many things in our lives. We choose to have a career. We choose to get married. We choose to get to buy a house or a car. It's a lot of choices that we make every day, uh, small and big choices. But all of those things, when we make those choices, what is our primary motivation in making a choice? Is it about self-gratification or is it about a higher purpose? When we look for a job, for example, what is in it that you are looking for? Is it about how you can gratify yourself or is it about how you can be a blessing to this world or to somebody else and bring honor and glory to God? God's purpose in placing us here in this world not to self-gratify ourselves but to be a blessing to this world and to the others. So if you have a higher goal and a higher purpose before you, that is when your goal becomes a good choice. It becomes, our cho it becomes very important when we make choices, simple, single or small or big. Buying a car or buying a house, anything that you make. I mean, it may be all for our personal needs and purposes, but beyond that, is there something in your mind that cares for others? Is there something in there that is higher than yourself that you can be a blessing to somebody else? That is a choice that you and I have to make every day, every moment in this world. Some people make bad choices or foolish choices. Like the man, Jesus said about the story of a man who built his house on the sand and the man who built his house on the rock. Choices. Where do you build it? A strong foundation. That is where we build. Sometimes God calls, uh, Jesus called them foolish. The rich fool that Jesus called. He amassed all his wealth and his bonds were filled to overflowing. And God told him, you fool, what if your life is taken away tonight? So what is our choice when it comes to making decisions? Is it about just ourselves or beyond that? To spread God's love to other people, to this world. So George Jones is a music icon, many of you probably know him. He um, wrote several songs and several song, um, sang several songs. One of them that I heard was uh, called Cold Heart Truth. Uh, one of the songs was titled in that album is Choices. This is one of the stanzas read that um, caught my attention. He read, I have had choices since the day that I was born. There were voices that told me right from wrong. If I had listened, no, I wouldn't be here today, living and dying with the choices I made. It was very, very experiential for him in his life because he actually had some alcoholic problems, alcohol problems, and he was desperately in his sick sickness at one point, living and dying with the choices I made. We do that every day. We live and die by the choices we make. Some choices are very easy to make. People think that way. To quit. It's an easy choice. The choice of the narrow gate to life and the broad gate to destruction. The broad way is easy, it is fun, but easy choices are not always the right choices. Sometimes we think that, oh, God gave, put this me very easy in front of me. But be very careful. We have to look at beyond ourselves and to look to God. The younger son made a decision to leave his father away from him, spend all the money, and he made the choice to do that. And then finally, he became poor with no friends, no money, no food, and then he found a job that he couldn't even dream of in his worst nightmare. Now, he is in the lowest point of his life and he made a choice. He came to his senses, that's what we read there, and he made a choice to return to his father. You know why he made the choice? Because deep in his heart he knew that his father would still take him back. Even though he, is, he does not have any right to go back because he took all his inheritance and left his father's presence. And when he asked for his inheritance, I told you the Jewish tradition, they don't divide inheritance until the death of the father. In other words, the son was actually wishing for the death of his father. He doesn't want his presence. 
But he knew his father very well at the bottom, when he hit the bottom of his life. He knew his father will still love, he still loved him. He knew he would take him back. Our Heavenly Father goes beyond and above that we can ever imagine. He will take you back. No matter what you did or what situation you are in, no matter where you are or what you have done, our Heavenly Father is a loving God. He will take us back. As we come and return and repent, he will take us back. Never quit. Never quit when things go bad. I heard somebody say, stick to the fight when you are hardest hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. So quitting is not an option for people of faith. We never quit. We persist. We persevere. We fight the fight with good fight. That God has given us to fight with his power. And that's the power of faith that we have. At the Billy Graham Crusade in 1994, a woman named Shirley Lansing gave a testimony that was deeply moving. She told the crowd, I come with a story about my son, John Kendall Morgan. He was a warrant officer in the United States Army, serving in Operation Desert Stone. Shirley told the crowd that her son, Jack, had committed his life to Jesus at an early age, John. At that time, she said, it didn't seem horribly important, but he made a choice to give his life to Jesus. Then she shared that it, two weeks ago, two officers came to our door and told us that they regretted to inform us that our son had been killed in action. His helicopter had been shot down by hostile Iraqi fire. When Jack got on the airplane to leave for Saudi Arabia, his mother recalled, he gave Lisa, his fiancée, a bride book. A bride book. They were planning for their wedding. Perhaps the most moving moment of Shirley's testimony came when she said, I speak to you only from my heart and out of my pain, because only God can give me the strength to stand here before you and say these words. But they are important. Each of you has a decision to make that like my son did. And this is the time when you have a choice because we have never known, we would never know how long we will have to make that decision. Three weeks before John Morgan was killed in action, he wrote two letters to his family. And many soldiers do that. And they put it in an envelope, seal it, and write on top of the envelope just in case. So if they ever get killed in war, those letters would be sent to their families just in case they die so they can open and read some of his important messages that he wanted to live, leave. And in that letter they received John's words were so reassuring because he made a good choice when he was young, very young. He said, in case you have to open this, please don't worry, I am all right. Now I know something you don't know, what heaven is like. Dear friends, our Father is waiting for us. He is waiting for us the same blessings that we enjoyed and He will restore and redeem us. It is not that we spent and spoiled everything. He will restore us everything back to normal where you were. Not as a slave, not, not as a servant, but as a child of God. Please come back to Him. If there is anyone who wants to come to Jesus today, please use this opportunity to come. Thank you.